You trying to transition into tech sales and make six figures doing it? Well, I'm about to give you some cheat codes on how to get it done. No experience needed. Let's get into it. This work. I'm gonna get this work. Be ready to get this work. 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 Yo, what's going on here? Shelton Banks, aka Mr. Get This Work. Uh, today we're gonna talk about transitioning into tech sales and how to make six figures. I feel like I hear this topic a lot, a lot. And oftentimes it's missing context, right? People make it seem easy. And while there it is could be relatively easy, there are a lot of nuances to doing it. And so today I'm gonna talk through some of those nuances on how you can first transition into tech sales, regardless of your background. I'm gonna show you some context on like how you can find a company that could be a good fit for you so that you can have your best, get the best shot at trying to make six figures your first year. And then lastly, I'm gonna show you a few examples of folks that have actually made the transition to my former company, Sprout Social, all right? So without further ado, first let's, let's talk about the transition, how you can transition uh, with no to little experience using the transferable skills that you already got. So I got this question a couple of days ago uh, from a Michael as he asked the question, he said, do you think some companies will be interested in someone with a significant accounting background in a sales role? Right, and so I know a lot of you all have experience from other sectors, whether it be accounting, nursing, real estate, you name it. That experience that you have is not only uh, valuable, but it's highly transferable. Let me show you what I'm talking about. So the tech industry is massive. I mean, massive. And there are lots of different sectors within the tech industry. If you, if you treat it like a grocery store, like if the, if the tech industry was a grocery store, there's a different aisle for everything. So like there is a, a FinTech aisle. So for, for Michael S who dropped that comment about accounting, there is a, uh, a fin technology is basically all technology that, that works with any type of like financial accounting, though, that type of software. There are tech companies for that. For those of you all who maybe have a medical background, maybe the nurses, the RNs, there is medical technology that exists. For the teachers out there, education technology. For those of you all who are in agriculture, for those of you all who maybe have a legal background, for those of you all who have a real estate background, marketing, hundreds of different sectors, hundreds of different aisles within the tech industry. And so like, what does that mean for you? Well, it means that if you have previous experience in a different sector, like accounting, you can use that experience, that knowledge that you have about general accounting, and it could add value to a company that is in the tech industry that aligns with the previous experience that you already got, right? And so you're like, all right, well, Shelton, how can I find those companies? Well, I'm gonna show you uh, what I like to call the Yelp of technology. Uh, G2 Crowd is, again, the Yelp of technology, the, the letter G, the number two, dot com. So this is G2 Crowd's website. Uh, and here you will see, it's like where you go for software, right? And ideally for you, if you're searching for a job, if you're trying to figure out how to transition, this is where you will go to kind of brainstorm, like, man, where you could add the most value based on your experience, right? And so let's do this. We're gonna do, I'm gonna type in accounting, and you will see that it has a couple of different categories that come up, different kinds of accounting. So investment accounting, leasing accounting, accounting just in general, accounting firms. And so I'm just gonna click on accounting, and what G2 is gonna do for me, it's gonna pull up all the different types of technology companies that are based in accounting. So accounting software, right? And so you would see, man, NetSuite Oracle is up here. Uh, QuickBooks Online is up here. Uh, Sage and Tact, you know, if you go to the full grid, you would see a host of different companies that fall on the software grid for accounting from leaders to neat, uh, to niches, to high performance, to contending, like you will see companies at all the different stages of accounting up here. Um, and again, like any one of these companies you go to, the thing is like these companies, the only way they make money is if they have a sales team to sell their software. So I can almost guarantee that every last one of these companies have BDRs and SDRs, they have salespeople, right? And so if you have a background in accounting, that experience 100% could be valuable 
and helping to build and grow relationships and helping the company make more money, right? Let me give you another one. So uh, I know we got, you know, nurses out there. Nursing is a big thing. I'm gonna type in, uh, I'm just gonna type in, oh, oh man, I'm gonna type in medical at first, but up oh, child care is a category. Some of y'all run daycares, child care. There's child care software out there. Boom, but like I said, we are gonna go medical. Medical, bunch of different type of medical categories out there, but medical uh, software out there, you name it, there is a software company that exists. And again, a beautiful part, like you don't have, just cause you haven't worked directly in tech sales, the experience that you have, again, the experience that you have is extremely valuable and that it can transfer into uh these different software companies again based on your experience man that that lived experience that industry specific experience is worth something in the tech industry get you paid let's talk about the second thing so i feel like whenever people say and talk about like oh you can make six figures in the tech industry that is true but there is a definitely an asterisk bite because not all tech companies are created equal not all of them are created equal in fact the easiest way i can break that down there is a curve uh, that tech companies go to and depending where a tech company is along the curve it's going to determine a lot as far as your experience and the the even potential that you have to make six figures in your first year so let me let me walk you through it real quick so to keep this simple we're going to sit put it like this that tech companies will fall into one of five buckets right one of five buckets BDR at an introductory stage tech company is gonna be completely different than a than a BDR SDR at a mature stage tech company. In fact, here's a better graph that probably illustrates it a little bit better, right? So uh, a BDR at a company that's in that kind of first mark of like MVP stage, and MVP isn't most valuable player in this sense. It stands for a minimal viable product. So a company, a tech company that just got its MVP of like, we just, we came up with a product and we think that we can sell it, right? There's a lot of things that they're trying to figure out. They're trying to figure out product market fit. They're trying to figure out how to pitch their product to, to, to other companies, other businesses. Um, in some cases, they're still searching for a, a problem solution fit. Like they're just figuring it out. They may have just gotten a little bit of money. And so if you go to a company like that as a BDR, like sure it's high potential that you're gonna make a lot but you're gonna be doing a lot so you may be a bdr but then you may get a little bit of experience being an account executive you're gonna get a little marketing experience you're gonna wear multiple hats if you are at that early stage company right versus if you had a company that has figured out their product market fit then you're trying to figure out like, man, how can we get as many people into this funnel as possible? How can we uh, get channel partners so that we can sell our product a little bit better? Uh, you're gonna get a little bit more support at an organization like this, just because again, they're slowly figuring it out. They're getting money to invest with versus once a company has figured out their product fit, then it's like, all right, man, those are usually high growth companies. They're not necessarily like publicly traded companies yet, like the Apples and the Dales, um, but they're growing at a high rate, right? They're getting investor money. And so your experience there is gonna be completely different than, than it would be at a startup, right? So you possibly are gonna let, make less money as a BDR at a uh, company that has a, a channel product fit. You're gonna make a little bit less than you would than, than a company that has a just figuring it out their 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 product market fit but like again depending on what you're looking for depending on your experience is going to be a completely different experience and of course like once you get to a mature stage company it's just like you know you're clogging the wheel they already figured out the process you're more or less going there to just uh continue the process going but a lot less creativity uh, a lot less flexibility. It's like we have structure already. We are rigid, and so you're you're basically coming in a, to, to be a number to keep our business growing, right? But these companies, again, the field that you're gonna have at each of these companies is gonna be completely different from company to company, depending on where they're falling on this this journey as an organization, right? And so now you're like, hey, Shelton. And so now like, if you're like Shelton, man, where can I go? Like, how do I know where a company is along that stage? It's a few different websites that you can go like Crunchbase to see like, man, how much money they have, how long they've been around, what stage 
of the chart are they on? Um, you're gonna see what round of funding they potentially have. Like it's gonna have a lot of information. But one of the easiest way cheat code for you, another cheat code is a, a company called RepView. So on RepView, you're gonna get a feel for this is specifically for sellers at tech companies. You'll get a feel for how reps are evaluating the company that they're at. One of my favorite spots, Sprout Social. Talk about them a little bit in a second. But you also get a feel and see, man, let's let's dive into some of these salaries, right? So sales development representative, you will see like, all right, where's the median salary fall, right? On target, where were you hit versus uh, what are top uh, performers doing? How much top performers are making? And then what percentage of those uh, reps are actually hitting the goal, right? And so as you scroll down, you'll be able to see again, kind of like difference, you know, there's different types of uh, sales reps, different types of account executives. You'll be able to see again, their the median base pay range. You'll be able to see the OTE, which stands on on target earnings. But then ultimately you will see quota attainment. So you will see the percentage of people that's actually hitting quota at that company to see if it's even in, in, in reason where you even have a shot at being able to make six figures your first year. And again, here's the thing, like if you are, if you got experience in the industry already, right? So if you like, man, I'm a, I've been in real estate for, for, for 10 years, I got a lot of real estate experience and you go to a tech company that is a real estate software company, again, that increases your opportunity to even be able to, to hit six figures, right? And so it's really, it's almost like you got to know yourself, know the strengths that you bring and picking the right tech company will make all the world of a difference in your journey, in your career. Man, hopefully that was helpful. But before I get out of here, before I go, man, so uh, yesterday I had the opportunity to go over to my, my alma mater of tech company, Sprout Social. I worked there as an account executive and I got to interview a couple of the folks that have come through the Get This Work community uh, and you know, just to show that, man, it doesn't matter your background, that this is for everybody. Uh, check out these interviews with us, Sam and Rich. All right, so give me your name. Richard Farmer. Richard Farmer, what do you do for a living? I'm a BDR for Sprout Social. BDR for Sprout Social. What is that? What does BDR mean? <laughs> it's a business development representative. Okay, a business development representative for Sprout Social. Uh, you want to tell the people what Sprout Social is? We are a social media tool platform uh, used to help you uh, live your best life. I love it, love it, love it. Now, Richard, before you were a BDR at Sprout Social, what did you do for a living? Uh, before, I was actually a security guard in this actual building. Um, and then I networked and made proper connections to put me in a great position. Dad, you were a security guard in this building. So you didn't have any BDR experience mm -hmm. before becoming a BDR. You are literally a security guard in this building. Literally, no sales experience at all. No sales experience. No sales experience at all. And so then, like, man, you you know, how did you, you know, tell me the journey. Like, how did you, yeah. give, me, give, me, give me how you got here. So my game plan when I got here was just to network with everybody. So I just wanted to make sure everybody knew my name. Um, I, somebody told me about Justin Howard, and I just introduced myself, asked him what books he read, could he have any time. He agreed, and he put me forward to now President Ryan Barreto. Um, I just kept in good contact, but you can have opportunity, you still got to execute. So because of rework, shout out to my mama. Get this work. Y'all see it? Get this work. Shout out to the, the all right, because yeah, of rework. Because of rework and me coming up and showing up, you can, you can show up, but you got to put forth the effort and the action, things they handed to you. So you still got to freaking grind. But at the end, it paid off. I actually profit, applied for Sprout, didn't get it. It was my main goal. I worked elsewhere for a year, mm -hmm. reapplied. Here we are. Got that thing. Got that thing. Man, so you said you, you found Rework. You went through Man, what did you learn when you went through Rework? Man, how to freaking interview. Like that, the, the blueprint. Man, you can apply it to everything. Literally everything. How to properly interview. Cold calling skills. Warm calling skills. Um, just putting you in the, the right connections. Just how to be a proper um, professional, man. The sales world. Tech sales world. Man, love it. Now you like, man, you said you went to a spot, got some experience. Mm -hmm. And you're in tech sales, dude. That's what's up, man. Well, good seeing you. Oh, good seeing you. Keep grinding. If y'all out there, make sure you get the work. Get this work. <laughs> Blooper. So we're back at Sprout Social uh, with, what's your name? My name is Sam. Sam, what do you do here uh, at Sprout Social? Hey, I am a senior SDR at Sprout. Senior SDR at Sprout. Please explain what a SDR is. Yeah, so SDR, uh, sales development rep, if you don't know what that means. Uh, 
I basically am the one taking down like inbound calls. Uh, so like people who are coming to us wanting to trial the tool, people coming into our chat, people coming in either wanting to request a demo, stuff like that. And I'm the one that reaches out and make sure to get them handled. Dang, bro, you like responsibilities, responsibilities. And so, like, man, you, you how long you been here again? Me, I've been here almost two years now. Back in April of 2021. 2021. So, man, what was you doing before you got to Sprout Social? A uh, whole lot of nothing, really. <laughs> I was uh, working at a restaurant, uh, kind of uh, doing my time in a sense. Uh, I would work there for about five years. I did actually apprentice sushi chef as well. Wow. Uh, but I was kind of getting a little bit tired of the work. So um, I ended up coming over to you actually, uh, over every work. Uh, and that's how I ended up getting my roots in into sales. And that's how I ended up uh, getting into Sprout. Oh, so what, 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 you used to be a sushi chef? <laughs> yeah, absolutely, yeah. So you had no senior SDR experience on your belt? Absolutely not, no. Mm-hmm. I I did not uh, have any sales experience other than just like customer facing stuff when I was working at a restaurant. But other than that, like, I never worked a sales job until being at Sprout. Ah, so let's talk, man, you said you found Rework, man. So let's talk about your experience with Rework. Like, how, how, how was it? Uh, well, I mean, I wouldn't be here without Rework. So fantastic uh, would be the first word on my mouth. Uh, so, yeah, I, I uh, worked with you. I worked with uh, Mr. Ben Nussbaum, and I, both of you helped teach me so many of the different things related to sales in general, like Salesforce. I never used Salesforce before being at Rework. Um, before Rework, actually, um, I went to another program called Year Up, which is actually how I met you for the first time, where you came over to introduce yourself and say hello and uh, make friends with us at, over at Year Up. So that's how I ended up getting to rework in the first place oh man solid and they said two years the growth and so like man for anybody who's like on the fence or if somebody was like man i don't know with so many boot camps out there i don't know which one to go to which one would you recommend uh well 100 percent rework for sure like re- rework is gonna be number one top of my list here uh yeah easily for sure because in the short time span that we i was with you guys i was with you for like what was it like two months about so from there, like going from just having two months of that sales training to then having interview after interview after interview where before I was having no interviews at all was such a huge step up from two months ago. Now, now two months turned into two years at Sprout Social. <laughs> this is what I'm talking about. Congratulations, man. For the look of good stuff. Appreciate you. Good. Glad to see you. Uh, we got a couple more questions from uh, this young lady over here. She wants to come in and interview. Right, hey, how's it going? Nice to meet you. So just a couple questions. So prior to you entering Rework, what did your family, what was your their experience as far as like what you were doing? What was your guidance from your family? Yeah, so my, my parents, uh, they're both incredibly supportive of everything I do, basically. So I had like their whole backing the whole way through. Uh, but they did have some reservations at first because they're like, we want to make sure this isn't a scam or anything like that. So like, mom, I, I, I get it. Like, I looked it up. To, trust me, it's fine. <laughs> and yeah, it was fine and better than fine, really. But um, yeah, I did uh, have to reassure them a few times just to make sure that uh, I wasn't getting duped or anything like that. But uh, otherwise, though, they had my back the whole way through. Awesome, awesome. So now as far as like career growth and where you are, like how do you feel like as far, for as far as anyone who's new to the program, kind of on the fence and they're thinking about it, what can you suggest to them? Yeah, well, the first thing I, I would suggest is to just do something different. Uh, mm-hmm. for, for me, like when I first got into rework, like at first I was kind of thinking to myself, like what, what am I going to really do with my life, honestly? And so like doing that first step to just understand like what is this program what is sales what is my what are my options was really the biggest eye opener for me to kind of see like wow there's such a huge world out here i had no idea even existed (laughs) and then did you feel like when you got here you had to change who you were just to fit in no, not at all. In fact, I, I feel more myself than I have anywhere else, honestly. <laughs> awesome, awesome. Well, congratulations to you again. Thank I think uh, Shelton's trying to get in on some more questions. <laughs> he, feels, he feels his authentic self at work. At work, you have to, you have to, no code switching? No, not really at all. Come on, man. <laughs> this is different. <laughs> this is different. This is all, oh, okay, man, you can't beat it, man. Look, man, it, it, can you just say, uh, get this work for the people out there in the, the, the TV line? Get this work. Get this work, baby. <laughs>
Mm. <laughs> you're thinking about transitioning into the tech industry. I don't want you to have to do it alone. Uh, Rework Training is a nonprofit organization uh, that I got the privilege of being a CEO of. We've been around for five years and helping people that look like me, that look like Rich, that look like uh, Candace that you saw in the interview, that look like Sam, helping these folks get jobs in the tech sales for free, free of charge. And so if you're on the fence, if you're like, hey man, what is this thing that they keep talking about? What does it get this work? You're looking to learn more about what we do, how we do it, and head over to reworktraining.org. Go ahead and either click the sign up. If you're sold, you're like, man, I want that to be me. I'm trying to be next. Hit the sign up button uh, to register for the next class. Uh, if you need a little bit more information, man, go over and check out the webinar. But either way, man, we're trying to help 25,000 people that look like me get jobs in the tech sales. I don't know what you're waiting for, man. Like, I'm putting it out there. We're trying to help everybody eat. And like Rich said, if you want it, you got to come get this work.